All right, so what we have today is a PC that's just put together of sort of misfit components. So we're gonna run through the components here that's going into this Ryzen build. And we're actually gonna start off here with the Fractal Design uh, Define R5, I believe is this particular case. Uh, it's been sitting around my closet now for a good long while. And there's a few reasons I actually want to use this case. First and foremost, it makes cabling and cable management in general just much easier easier in this chassis, mostly just because it does not have any sort of side glass panel, no, no uh, acrylic or anything like that. It's got good cable management behind the motherboard tray. It's just a really easy case to work in. And it actually has, at least right now, Pretty good airflow. I think I have it decked out with three of these 140 millimeter fans. Now, the one in the back is gonna be replaced, and it's gonna be replaced by this guy. I'm gonna have to move some of this stuff out of the way to get back to the cooler here. And that back fan is gonna be replaced by this. This is the Gamdius uh, I don't actually know how to pronounce that word, but E1A 120. This is a 120 millimeter AIO, and it's been kicking around my closet for a while now, so it's about time it gets uh, gotten rid of, and it's gonna pair really nicely as a cooler that I really don't have much use for at this point because it's gonna pair nicely with the Ryzen 5 2400. Now, again, this is kind of a PC for misfit components. This is sort of my way of unloading several different components that I'm just not gonna use in the near future. So the Ryzen 5 2400, four cores, eight threads, it does have onboard graphics that we're not gonna be using, but it is a decent gaming CPU even here in 2020, especially when it gets pared down with the R9 290 that I took a look at a while back. I'll try to remember to link a card to this, but this video card still does quite well at 1080p gaming. The problem with it is it needs a lot of space in a case, and fortunately, as you can see, we have plenty of space with the Define R5 here, so it's gonna go great there. Now moving down to the motherboard, which you may have already caught a glimpse of, this is an X370 motherboard. This is actually the motherboard I've been using for uh, my test bench now for quite a while. So it's gonna finally get replaced here, at least hopefully if, uh, if this PC sells uh, within a reasonable time span, which I think it will. Uh, this motherboard's gonna eventually get replaced on the, the test bench now, since it just won't be in my possession anymore, but really good motherboard has pretty solid VRMs going on. It, it's been an excellent motherboard. I absolutely love this motherboard, but it's X370, so it's probably time to move on. And it is gonna get a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR4 uh, Corsair LPX. I believe this is rated at about 3000 megahertz. So hopefully I can actually get it up to that 3000 megahertz. And uh, let's see storage here. We have a two terabyte hard drive. We also have my dog roaming through. Say hey, Jack. So we have two terabytes of hard drive storage. And then for the boot drive, I'm just gonna be using this 120 or 128 gigabyte SSD um, on the M.2 slot for this motherboard, which will give us a really nice snappy boot system while still keeping a lot of storage available for games and other mass media. And then finally moving over to the power supply, I picked up this 600 watt EVGA B stock power supply for something like, I believe it was $35 before shipping. After shipping, it ended up being, you know, a little bit over $40 probably, but still a really good deal for a new, or at least a like new power supply here in 2020 where uh, power supplies are kind of hard to come by. So that is the overview of the components of this uh, sort of PC of misfit components. Let's get to building the thing. So unfortunately, in the building of this PC, we did run into one problem, and that is that the R9290 seems to have died at some point, uh, probably from just getting jostled around on a shelf or something. It was definitely alive when I made the video about it, but apparently it gave up the ghost now since uh, it's been sitting on the shelf 
or probably got dropped or something like that. Anyways, we do have the GTX 970 in this build now, which actually should give very similar performance to the R9 290 and actually even uses the same uh, pin configuration here. We have an eight pin as well as a six pin PCIe power connector going into the GTX 970 but it should give a similar performance so it shouldn't throw off the balance of the PC too much. With that in mind, let's hop into some benchmarks. So before we hop right into those benchmarks, the exact specs that are tested uh, in these games is gonna be the Ryzen 5 2400G. It's at stock settings, and yes, there's absolutely room to overclock this CPU, and in fact, I'd recommend it, but we're gonna run it on stock settings just because that's about usually how I sell PCs. I don't typically overclock them or anything like that. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory running at 2666 megahertz because this CPU couldn't quite get to 3000 megahertz with this kit of memory and then the GPU is the GTX 970 again because the R9 290 apparently died on me so we're going with the GTX 970 here and first up for the benchmarks we have Fall Guys again this is on the high preset at 1080p and really what I'm doing with this title is just checking to make sure that we're getting pretty much a locked 60 FPS or at least as close to it as possible so I averaged 59 FPS a 1% low of 55 and a 0.1% low there of 45 this was a perfectly acceptable experience for this title which is locked at 60 FPS. Now moving on to Fortnite, this was a little bit interesting because the CPU was the bottleneck here. It was pretty much capping out the CPU at 99% utilization, even with the GTX 970. So I saw an average FPS of 162, and there was a little bit of stuttering in this title to the point that I would actually recommend capping the frame rate at something like 120 and just rolling with that, which would have smoothed some of those stutters out. But the average is really strong there at 162, 1% low at 99, and a 0.1% low there at 50, and that's on the low preset. Of course, if you like a little bit more eye candy and would like to shift a little bit more of the load back over to the GPU to alleviate some of that CPU bottleneck, then raising the settings to medium or even high settings would get that done. Now to represent our AAA titles, we do have the Metro Exodus benchmark here, and I saw an average FPS of 46, but it definitely did dip into the 30s and low 30s, and really even into the high 20s at times throughout this benchmark. So this would be a title that is playable at the normal preset. However, I would actually recommend dropping that down even a little bit lower, maybe just lower a couple settings a little bit further to get the frame rate a little bit higher in those areas of the world where it does dip a little bit. And the last benchmark I ran was Red Dead Redemption 2. This was on low settings, and it, for the most part, was a pretty good experience. We were seeing frame rates in the mid-30s pretty much the entire time. Obviously, there were a couple of dips which drop-kicked our 1% and 0.1% lows. I would classify this as a playable experience, but this title is really pushing the GTX 970 to its limits at this point, to the point where you may even want to think about dropping the resolution a little bit lower than 1080p to get that frame rate a little bit higher. Now, fortunately, this isn't necessarily the fastest paced game out there, so you can absolutely make do with these lower frame rates, especially if you're coming from a console gaming background, this is gonna be an acceptable experience to you. But if you're somebody that really wants to target that 60 FPS, you're absolutely gonna have to drop below 1080p to get there, at least with this GTX 970 combined with the 2400G. So that's pretty much it from this PC for Misfit Components number two. The GTX 970 is definitely starting to show its age a little bit in some of these titles. So while it can still game at 1080p, you are definitely gonna have to limit your, uh, your sort of uh, detail down to about some of the low settings on some of these modern AAA titles. If you're in the eSports though, this computer is gonna handle you just fine. And what I really do like about this PC for Misfit Components number two is that it has great upgradability without having to swap out every single part in the system. So when we look at the CPU, for instance, on X370 with the BIOS update on this motherboard, you can currently upgrade this CPU clear up to the Ryzen 3000 series. So you could go all the way up to something like a Ryzen 9 3950X if you really wanted to, and this motherboard should be able to handle that, at least at stock settings, fairly well. Now, if you're getting into overclocking the 3950X, that might start to push 
the VRMs a little bit. I'm not really sure uh, how much that motherboard can take. It is a pretty solid VRM setup, but it's not the top tier of all motherboards out there, but it should be able to handle a 3950X, at least at stock settings. Certainly a 3900X could be easily handled by this motherboard. In fact, I've ran the 3900X for extended periods of time overclocked on this motherboard. So this motherboard does have some legs left in it, and that uh, really goes to credit AMD's AM4 platform uh, that they've carried it forward for so long so far. And then if you need a GPU upgrade, because the power supply is already really solid in this system, it's an 80 plus unit, 600 watts rated, uh, you have a lot of upgradability with the GPU as well, especially considering as these GPUs have, have gone along, they've gotten more and more power efficient. So 600 watts is plenty for pretty much any modern gaming PC out there. And the Fractal Define R5 does give you great upgradability when it comes to storage because we do have those drive bays available if you want to add more hard drives or SSDs or whatever the case is. So there's just great upgradability with this system and it should be a really solid starting platform for somebody when I actually go to sell this thing. So that's it from the PC for Misfit Components number two. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about it. Obviously the whole point of this system was that I didn't actually have to buy anything new. So yeah, I didn't want to have to buy anything new and I didn't have to outside of that power Power supply was really the last part that I was waiting on buying. So if there was something that you would change with this system, I totally understand that. Let me know in the comments down below, but also understand the reason the system was put together is because it was made of stuff that I basically already had on hand. And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.